Hey, Brian, how you doing? How you doing, Wade? Thanks for being on the social network. Uh, but the thing is this, I'm a little disappointed. I'm not going to lie. What's that? I thought Ken the Box was calling in. Oh, Ken the Box. He's a, uh, a big hero of mine. Uh, Justin Gabriel turned me on to him, actually. I, I saw that on Twitter, your Twitter. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I got to check this out. And I actually watched it last night. So thanks to at Wade Barrett on Twitter and, uh, you know, Justin Gabriel, too, because I, that was good stuff. If you've never seen it, you got to look it up on YouTube. Just type in Ken the Box. The best wrestling gimmick ever. Yeah, it's great. I, my favorite thing is looking at the fans in the background on YouTube and watching their reactions to him. He's uh, a very cool cat. It's hilarious. But now, I, I really want to talk about your career. And, you know, Wade Barrett online from WWE, pregame pandemonium. This Sunday, Wade, it's going to be great. And you can see it before the big game, 1 o'clock. And you're taking on Rey Mysterio Jr. And that's going to be an interesting yeah, match. Yeah, that's right. It's going to be uh, my first ever singles match with Rey Mysterio. Um, we came into contact a couple of times during the Royal Rumble this past Sunday. Um, and I'm really looking forward to getting my uh, get, well, getting to go with uh, Rey Mysterio in a one-on-one situation this Sunday in uh, Philly. You gonna try to rip that mask off? I hope. Well, you know, I think that's everyone's aim. As soon as you step in the ring with Mysterio, <laughs> tear that mask off, humiliate him a little. But um, yeah, very, <clears throat> very excited about the uh, the match. It should be a lot of fun. Now, what's the game plan? You're gonna take his knees out because he's a flyer, right? Um, I don't know about taking his knees out. I think I just need to get close enough to him to uh, once I got my hands on him, I think he can't get away. I think the problem with him, he's so fast. Uh, move so quickly that he's difficult to uh, to try and pin down. But once I've got him, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna bully him. I'm gonna terrorize him. I'm gonna uh, really really go out there to hurt him. I think the poor guy's taking his own knees out anyway. You might not have to do that now, Wade. Uh, that's gonna <laughs> tickets start at just twenty bucks. Best value in family entertainment by far. Before you became a professional wrestler, you were a tough guy, a bare knuckle boxer. Tell us about that. Um, well, I was bare knuckle fighting in the, the UK just after I uh, finished in university. Um, it was a very interesting way to earn money. Um, it was a very, um, the legality of it was quite dubious. So um, it's not something I've really talked about too much in the past. But um, yeah, it was a way of earning money at the time. Um, I did okay at it. I did pretty well. My nose um, tells a lot of stories. It's so bent out of shape now. Um, but eventually I, uh, I decided I wanted to come to the States and, and earn some real money with the WWE and uh, trying to get to the top here and uh, win some titles with WWE. So that's my goal these days. You're doing a great job with that, Wade. I noticed when you wrestle that your hair never moves. When you got punched in the face, of, <laughs> did your hair move then? Like, what are you putting your hair to keep it? Like I, have, uh, I have very good quality hair gel. It's called Super Glue. Uh, when it does exactly what it says on the tin. <laughs> Super glue. All right, well, after you left the bare-knuckle boxing world, you you know started to train. That's what every wrestler does. And one of the guys that I'm pretty sure trained you was Al Snow. Um, well, I was actually only with Al Snow for quite a short period of time. That was when I first left the UK, um, where I'd probably been wrestling for about three years on the independent scene um, and first came to the States. And I maybe worked with Al for probably four or five months with OVW before... WWE closed that down and sent us all to Florida to work with FCW. So um, in terms of my trainers, I mean, Al has certainly been one of my trainers in the States. Uh, I've also been trained by uh, Norman Smiley, Dr. Oh. Tom Pritchard, uh, Billy Kidman, Steve Kern, um, and Dusty Rhodes as well. So I've, I've, I've had a lot, of, a lot of people with a lot of experience training me. Um, but in terms of Al Snow, I think the, uh, the key thing I learned from him was when I first came over to the UK, I wasn't too good on the psychology of American professional wrestling, and Al really imprinted into me um, how to tell a story in the ring, um, how you should behave as a uh, as a bad guy, as it were, uh, versus a good guy and stuff like that. And, I mean, psychology-wise, um, Al's really really got that nailed down. So um, that was probably the the thing I took from Al Snow. Now, this was after you made your debut, you said, because you, from what I've read, I mean, I, I know about you, but I, I didn't know some of the finer points. I didn't realize you debuted at 21 years old. That was uh, at Stu Sanders, NWA Hammerlock Wrestling. Now, yeah, that, that isn't actually true. There's a lot of stuff online that isn't true. Um, that is one of them. I actually decided to become a professional wrestler at 21 years old, but I was very, very skinny at the time. I was maybe six foot six, um, but about, probably about 160 pounds. So at the age of 21, I started working out and beefing myself up to become a professional wrestler, but I didn't actually start training to be a wrestler until early 2004. So there's some stuff online that's been put out there that um, that people misunderstand and, and sort of put out there. But um, yeah, it's, it's actually two, 2004 I made my debut. Okay, they're making you a veteran before your time. So when you made your debut, yeah. yeah, right? When when um, you made your debut, uh, you know, everybody when they start, start out in the wrestling business has to have like an embarrassing story or something weird that happened because you're just starting. It's like anything else. Sure. 
Oh, I mean, I had um, on the UK independency, I had more than my fair share of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, of bad matches. I, um, you know, I was very, very green, as it were. And um, I had several occasions where I'd, um, <clears throat> I'd be in the ring and, and we'd be put on a terrible match. I'd be in there with a veteran or someone who likes to think of themselves as a veteran and likes to think they'd be able to lead somebody through a match and wasn't really capable of it, in fact. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's there's not one particular story that stands out. But, yeah, I mean, I had my, my fair share of bad matches at the beginning like everybody else. Okay, well, again, I'm on the phone with Wade Barrett, pregame pandemonium this Sunday, 1 o'clock. Go there before the game. He's taking on...